the Battle of the Books. Good morning. Today is another great day for Battle of the Books, and we have two great books ahead of you. Today we're going to be reading The Proudest Blue by Ibtihaj Muhammad and Small World by Isha Mercurio. Let's get started. The Proudest Blue. Mama holds out the pink. Mama loves pink. But Asaya shakes her head. I know why. Behind the counter is the brightest blue, the color of the ocean. And if you squint your eyes and pretend, there's no line between the water and the sky. It's the first day hijab. Asaya knows it. I know it. We're sisters. The next day I wait. A new backpack, new light-up shoes. I feel special. I feel like twirling. Asaya comes out of the house and I stop. It's the most beautiful first day of school ever. I'm walking with a princess, so I pretend I'm one too. But even princesses have to stop and cross the street. Asaya takes my hand in hers and says, Come on, Faza. We speed walk it. Fourteen steps. Fourteen light-ups to get across. Asaya takes me to my, my line first. Hugs me goodbye. I turn to watch her leave. Give her a little curtsy to the princess going to the sixth grade area. She's easy to see. Her hijab smiles at me the whole way. My first day hijab is going to be blue, too. What's on your sister's head? The girl in front of me whispers. A scarf, I whisper back. I don't know why a whisper came out. I try again louder now. A scarf. A hijab. Oh, she whispers. Asaya's hijab isn't a whisper. Asaya's hijab is like the sky on a sunny day. The sky isn't a whisper. It's always there, special and regular. The first day of wearing hijab is important. Mama had said, it means being strong. I turn, but I can't see the blue anymore. I run to the big kid's side. 27 steps to see Asaya. I need to give her another hug. I need to see her smile. Faiza, Asaya's eyes wonder why I'm here. Are you excited, I ask, about the first day of hijab? She nods, smiling big, and I feel better. Someone laughs from nearby, a boy pointing at Asaya. Why? Asaya's hijab isn't a laugh. Asaya's hijab is like the ocean waving to the sky. It's always there strong and friendly. Some people won't understand your hijab, Mama had said, but if you understand who you are, one day 
they will too. In class, I draw a picture. Two princesses in hijab having a picnic on an island where the ocean meets the sky. The girl who whispered in line says she likes it. She says it's so loud. The teacher comes over to see it. I wonder if Asaya drew a picture too. Recess time is for five cartwheels in a row. I land the last one near the sixth graders, near Asaya and her friends, near a boy yelling, I'm going to pull that tablecloth off your head. Asaya's hijab isn't a tablecloth. Asaya's hijab is blue. Only blue. Asaya turns away. Her friends turn away. They race to the middle of the schoolyard, their shoes pounding the pavement, playing tag. Mama, don't carry around that hurtful words that others say. Drop them. They are not yours to keep. They belong only to those who said them. It takes me 48 steps to get away from the yelling boy. After school, I look around. I look for whispers, laughs, and shouts. But I only see Asaya waiting for me, like it's a regular day. She's smiling strong. We cross the road hand in hand. I can't wait to get home to show Mama the picture I drew, to show Asaya that I'm wearing the same hijab in it. Because Asaya's hijab is like the ocean and the sky, no line between them, saying hello with a loud wave, saying I'll always be here, like sisters, like me and Asaya. That is the proudest blue. Now it's time for book number two, Small World. When Nanda was born, the whole of the world was wrapped in the circle of her mother's arms, safe, warm, small. But as she grew, the world grew too. It became the circle of her loving family. A bubbling, a bubble of giggling playmates. And slides and swings and whirly gigs and tumbles through the grass.
Nanda got bigger and bigger, but as she grew, the world grew too. It became a sway of branches. Scaffolds of steel. And cables and cogs and odds and sods and coasting through the night. Nanda got bigger and even bigger, but as she grew, the world grew too. It became a sun-kissed maze of wheat, pinecone pricked mountains, and microscopic elegance of fractals and in the snow. It soared through a symphony of glass and stone. It spooled through spirals of wire and foam, a human-powered helicopter lifting towards the sky. Nanja got bigger and bigger, but as she grew, the world grew too. It became the roar of twin engines, a glittering ocean far below, and the curve of the planet beneath her. One day, when Nanda was bigger than she had ever been before, her feet touched foreign soil. Her ears heard a crackle of voices. She gazed out into ink-black space and saw a sea of stars moonless and deep, distant suns twinkling, marbled planets orbiting specks small in the distant night. And the earth softly glowing, a circle called home, safe, and warm and small. And that is a small world. Hope you have enjoyed our readings today. Um, I don't know that I have a favorite today either. They're both really good. I can't wait to see how your votes fall, and I will announce it this afternoon. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday.